assessment is an important aspect of what we do as practitioners to help pinpoint the area of uh, injury to the tissues that we need to work. Injuries at the shoulder can be extremely difficult to pinpoint because shoulder pain can be referred from other structures in the neck as well as trigger points in the cervical and upper back muscles. That means that we can go through this assessment, but we may not have a definitive answer about where the pain is actually originating from uh, without doing further investigation. When doing range of motion assessments for shoulder injuries, rotator cuff injuries, we want to do active range of motion first, and those consist of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, horizontal abduction, and horizontal adduction. During active range of motion, since this is a ballpark test, we are looking for any part of the motion that creates pain. Sometimes we'll just see a client make a face, or if they're good at reporting, they can tell us that there's some pain with movement or some portion of the movement. As I said earlier, passive motion is generally pain-free. Uh, this active range of motion is a ballpark test, so it tests both contractile and non-contractile tissues. This gives us the indication that pain is actually coming from the rotator cuff shoulder joint area. It doesn't necessarily pinpoint the tissue at fault yet. So we're going to start, Sammy, with active range of motion. Now, for the purposes of the video, we are only going to, going to assess one shoulder. Uh, in practice, you would work with the unaffected side first and have the client go through all these ranges of motion and then uh, make a note uh, at, during active range of motion in the affected side where pain and limitation occurs. So, Sammy, I'm going to have you let your left arm hang at your side. And the first thing we'll have you do is with your thumb facing forward, lift your left arm up just straight up over your head like that, looking at active range of motion. This is normal range here. And I know you have some issues with this shoulder. Do you have any pain with this motion? Slight pinching. Up Slight back. pinching on the back. Okay. And if you were to go farther, would that pinching get worse? Yes. It would get worse. Okay. So this is a note that we make in our, in our notes about where she has pain where she feels it and where what part of the motion it occurs in and come back down. And now turn your thumb out to the side and then bring your arm up into abduction all the way up as if you're going to touch your ear. So the range of motion looks good. Is there pain with this at all? Slight discomfort. Slight discomfort. So that pain you were feeling in the back isn't there when you do this motion. It's just more of like a discomfort. Discomfort. Okay. And come back down. And with your thumb facing forward, now you're going to pull your arm back into extension at the shoulder. That's excellent range. Try not to stoop over. See if you can keep your back straight. There you go. Does that cause any pain or discomfort? Okay, so no pain with active extension. And bring your arm up with the, uh, to your side with the thumb up like that. Hold it right there. That's not painful, right? Now, can you pull back? This is horizontal abduction. Oh, that's right against the wall. How's that feel? Any pain? Just a stretch. A stretch on the front? No pain in the back. Okay. And then come all the way around to the front like you're pulling your arm across your chest. Does that bother you at all? Pull it a little bit with your opposite hand. That's okay? All right, good. And relax. Okay, so that's active range of motion for the shoulder joint. We've gone through flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, horizontal abduction, and horizontal adduction. If you're starting out with doing observation of the shoulder girdle, we're looking for the client to stand. This could be done sitting as well, relaxed, and then just Observe for imbalances. You know, one shoulder is higher than the other. There's an anterior or posterior rotation of some kind. Maybe the arms are medially rotated. So we have Sammy standing with her arms relaxed, her thumbs facing forward. In chronic cases of shoulder impingement or other shoulder issues, you may notice some atrophy of the deltoid on the affected side. So in a normal position with the arms hanging at the side and the thumbs facing forward, the arms would rest, the hands would be at the side. 
But in a case where there's excessive internal rotation of the humerus, Sammy's demonstrating what may happen. The, the arms are immediately rotated, the hands, the palms are facing the back. They even may be touching in the front of the thigh. Some athletic exercises uh, that cause excessive medial rotation, like the butterfly stroke in swimming or maybe upright rowing in weight training, are the most frequent cause of these kinds of uh, rotate, medial rotation issues that then will lead to some kind of shoulder rotator cuff impingement. One of the conditions to check for uh, that would reflect rotator cuff impingement of some kind is what's called the painful arc. During both active and passive range of motion, during this movement from about 45 degrees of abduction to about 120 degrees of abduction, the client would experience some kind of pain, which normally would be coming from impingement, possibly the result of subacromial bursitis, maybe a bone spur in the joint or on the, on the acromion, or some tendinopathy in the rotator cuff, which has caused uh, thickening that creates less space for the tendon to slide under the acromion. So Sammy starting in normal position, the beginning of the rotator of the uh, the beginning of the painful arc would be about 45 degrees of abduction up through about 120 degrees of abduction. So if this is not painful actively, it's probably not going to be painful passively either and relaxed. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification button.